Hello, welcome again to Expanding the Bible. I am your host, Nathaniel Morell, and today we will uh, talk about the subject on where does Christmas wreaths, mistletoe, and the Yule Log come from. Again, these are activities that we do during Christmas, and if uh, this is actually the uh, fourth and final uh, video study of our mini series of uh, Christmas holiday and its origin, um, this we are going to discuss a little bit more the few uh, minor things that we do during Christmas and where do they come from. We dealt last time in our previous video, we dealt with the origin of Santa Claus, where does he come from, and we actually saw from the Bible and the historians that Santa Claus is Nimrod and derives from Nimrod. We found out that the word, uh, the name Santa, the name Santa was a nickname for Nimrod, and Nimrod was the father of all gods and established every pagan deity that we see, uh, the sun god, sun worship, and, uh, and star worship, uh, uh, nature worship, every, everything that, every uh, uh, god, uh, false god, that has nothing to do with, with uh, God, Jehovah, uh, every false god derived from Nimrod, and all this heathen practice derived, derived from Nimrod. He was the father of all pagan gods and of all pagan religion. So uh, we want to take it a little more and wrap this up as we continue our study on Christmas. We want to see where does where does uh, uh, these mistletoe practice, uh, the burning of the Yule log, and putting up Christmas wreaths, where do they have their place? Are they from Christian origin or are they from pagan origin? We got to be careful. Are we following the commandments of God or are we following the traditions of men? And the Bible actually says that uh, uh, we're going to go to uh, open your Bibles to uh, Colossians chapter 2. Colossians chapter 2. We've been dealing with Mark chapter 7, 7 through 9, uh, but we're not going to be dealing with that in this video. But Mark chapter 7, verse 7 through 9, Jesus is explaining to the people that people in vain worship Christ and they will rather go after traditions of men than the commandments of God. And that's what we see going on today. People would rather, people worship God thinking that they are keeping Christmas for the sake of the birth of Christ. But in actuality, the Bible, nowhere does it say that Christ was born in Christmas. It actually says that keeping Christmas is a is forbidden. It was only kept by the heathens. The heathens used to call it Saturnalia, and it was kept from December 17th through the 25th. And they used to keep that holiday far, uh, way before the birth of Christ, way before Christ even came into existence. They used to call it, they used to call it Saturnalia. Today we call it Christmas. They used to have their Santa Claus. We have our Santa Claus, the same thing. They used to have their Christmas trees. We have our Christmas trees. They used to have uh, their houses decorated with lights. We have our houses decorated with lights. Everything that the pagan heathens used to do in their Saturnalian holiday was the, is the same thing we do in our still Saturnalian hol holiday but we rename it Christmas. And instead of worshiping the birthday of the sun god, we are worshiping supposedly the birthday of the son of God, which is Christ. But the Bible says that there is no there is no way that Christ was born on December 25th. It is, it is a day that the Bible is silent about. In fact, when you study the Bible, you actually find out that Christ was born in the fall around mid-September, October area, maybe early November. He was born in the fall instead of the winter. But we want to look at Colossians chapter 2, verse 6 through 8. And Paul is saying here, As ye have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk ye in him, rooted and built up in him, and established in the faith, as ye have been taught, abounding therein with thanksgiving. Beware, he says, lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit, after the traditions of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. So Paul is giving a warning. He is saying, listen, as ye have received Jesus Christ as Lord, walk in him. So that means you receive Christ, walk, keep walking in Christ. Keep studying the Word of God. Keep studying the Bible. He says, keep studying the Bible. And then he says, be rooted and built up in Him and established in the faith. He says, get rooted in Christ. 
read the Bible, study your Bible, and get rooted and established in the faith. So that way, when a false theory comes, you test it with the Word of God, and you know that's false, and the Lord doesn't approve of that. So he says, be rooted and built up, established in the faith, that ye have been taught, abounding therein with thanksgiving. Then he says, beware, lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit, after the traditions of men and the rudiments of the world and not after Christ. So Paul is saying, after you have been walking through Christ, you have been studying the Bible, you have been rooted and established in the faith, he says, beware lest a person come to you with vain philosophy or strange doctrines or teaching, trying to teach you and establish the traditions of men and not after Christ. And what we have been looking at in these past studies of Christmas, that Christmas is nothing more than the traditions of men and not after Christ. Every single, every single thing that we do in Christmas, Christmas trees, uh, uh, Santa Claus, everything that has to do with Christmas, even the date, according to what we have seen in the Bible and historians confirming the Bible, have no place in Christ. Christ forbids all those actions, which means that Christmas is not a, a day to celebrate Christ. It is a day that the heathens did to celebrate. So, so let's go and, and, and expound a little more on this tradition. Let's go now with, uh, let's deal with <clears throat> the Christmas wreath. Is that a tradition from ancient paganism or is that actually a Bible-based tradition? practice. Let's look at let's look at the uh, historians. Let's look at the historians and uh, we will talk about the Christmas wreath or the original name was holly wreath. Uh, holly wreaths, yule logs and mistletoe. Uh, let's read a little more uh, about this. Talking about the holly wreaths, we are going to look at the Encyclopedia Americana and it states the holly, the mistletoe, the yule log are relics of pre-Christian times. So what does that mean? It means paganism. The yule log was commonly used in the rites of the Teutonic nature worship. So, so it says if the holly, the mistletoe, the yule log are relics of pre-Christian times, that means that these practices were practiced long before Christianity ever came into existence. So. You can't put the excuse, oh, it has Christian origin. No, it doesn't. Because we see the use of this before Christianity, before Christ ever came into this world. We already see them in practice, not by those who worship God, but by those who worshiped the devil, the heathens, led by Nimrod. Let's go, uh, let's go uh, more further. Frederick Haskin, he says in his book, it says, The use of Christmas wreaths is believed by authorities to be traceable to the paying customs of decorating buildings and places of worship at the feast, which took place at the same time of Christmas. So today we call it Christmas. Back then they called it Saturnalia. Uh, uh, the, the origin of the wreath and putting wreaths in houses and, and in stores and places actually derived from these pagan places of worship. They were pagan customs. Let's look at the Encyclopedia, the Encyclopedia Britannica. It says, European pagans brought holly, or the holly wreath, or Christmas wreath. European pagans brought holly sprays into their home, offering them to the fairy people in the forest as refuge from the harsh winter weather during the Saturnalia. So, who was the one that brought forth the, 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 the practice customs of Christmas wreaths? It was the pagans. The pagans who used to try to appease their gods by the harsh winter, and they would use that as a token of friendship to one another, blessed by their pagan sun gods. And it says again, they used to do it during the Saturnalia, which is a day to honor Saturn. Another name for Saturn is Nimrod. 
and that used to go on around December 17th all the way to December 25th. That was Nimrod's birthday and Nimrod became the sun god so that got associated with the birthday of the sun god. It's sun worship, not Christ worship. If this is a holiday to honor Christ, why are we grabbing ancient practices that were used to celebrate the birth of the pagan sun god? That makes no sense at all. Of course, Christmas ain't Christmas without kissing under a mistletoe. So let's see if that is based on the Bible or based on paganism. Let's read more. It says, Christmas is incomplete to many unless it involves kissing under the mistletoe. This is also a pagan custom. The pagan custom was a natural on the night that involved much revelry during that which were drunken sexual orgies. Just like Christmas today, this kissing usually occurred at the beginning of the Saturnalia celebration. Mistletoe was considered to have special powers of healing for those who reveled under it. So again, saying that it was a pagan origin. It derived from the pagan tradition. It has nothing to do with the Bible. It has everything to do with pagan tradition. Let's, let, let's look at this one. The Encyclopedia Britannica states, the European mistletoe is thought to have had special ritual significance in druidical ceremonies and in and lie and lives in folklore today it's its special status as the christmas mistletoe having come from the anglo-saxon times so let's break this down a little bit european mistletoe is thought to have had great special ritual significance in druidical ceremonies druidical ceremonies you know what are druidical ceremonies they were the druids and if you study the Druids, they were actually a tribe, in uh, a ancient tribe, pagan tribe, in in, in uh, ancient Europe, and they were one of the most wicked people in this world, from from human sacrifice to 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 killing one another for no reason. I mean, they were they had it all, sun worship to the extreme. These were one of the real followers of. Nimrod and they continue their practice all the way up to uh, in the mid May about the uh, I would say the 1400s that was when they were maybe starting to die down a little bit but you can still go back you can go to uh, museums and find their ancient relics and stuff and you can see that that they were really to the extreme the history says they were they were very tough guys and these guys would would, would, would do human sacrifice to honor their sun god. And who is the sun god? Nimrod. The same type of things that we do in Christmas today, they did it, but they did it in its original form. We do it today, but under a different guise. We, they, they, they sort of, when they wanted Christianity and paganism to come and worship together, there were some things that paganism had to leave out, but they would still bring it into Christianity, but convert it under a different name, under a different uh, excuse, under different guise, and make it look good, but it was actually still tied up to their ancient ancient pagan uh, rituals. It came from the Christmas, uh, the, it says the mistletoe was also Christmas mistletoe having come from Anglo-Saxon times, meaning from the pagan world. So, so far we are 0 for 2. Holly wreaths or Christmas wreaths? Pagan. Nowhere, nothing to do with Christ or his birth or Christianity in the Bible. The uh, Mistletoe, pagan. Nothing to do with Christ or his birth or the Bible. So we're 0 for 2. So let's see maybe if the Yule Log can maybe change something for once. Going again, reading on. It says, like mistletoe, holly berries were bought. Were, sorry, say it again. Like mistletoe, holly berries were also thought to be sacred to the sun god. The original sun log came to be called the Yule Log. Yule simply means wheel, which has long been a pagan representation of the sun. So, again, let's analyze this briefly. 
the Yule log, as we call it today, back in the ancient world, in the pagan world, it was called the sun log to honor their sun god. And then, when they were trying to pass it over to Christianity, they Christianized it and called it Yule Log. And then it says the, the word Yule, one of the meanings, because it has a lot of meanings, most of it can be traced back to ancient paganism, but one of the meanings of Yule also means wheel, and the wheel was a representation of the sun, because the wheel is round and the sun is round. So the pagans used to use that as a representation of their sun god. So. Uh, when we say, let's go get a Yule log, we are actually saying sun god, meaning sun log to sun worship. So what does that have to do with a holiday that is supposed to be not sun worship, but Christ worship? Why do we have that? And what the pagans used to do is because the Yule log was a symbol uh, of Nimrod. And, uh, and, and they would put the Yule log, they would burn it as symbol of Nimrod's death. And then the next day, as the tradition was said, it was supposed to be resurrected in a form of a Christmas tree, which also represents Nimrod back to life again. So all this has, has pagan meaning. Let's also look at, at uh, Alexander Hislop's book, The Two Babylons. And this is a very incredible uh, historian, written, wrote this, uh, actually was in pamphlet form. It was put together as a book later on, but he wrote this in the uh, mid to late 1800s. And it was, it's a magnificent piece of work. To, uh, he uh, writes very clear the origin of pagan practices that are uh, in use today. And talking about the Yule Log, uh, he also says, that Christmas was originally a pagan festival is beyond all doubt. The time of the year that the ceremonies with which it is still celebrated proves its origin. In Egypt, the son of Isis, the Egyptian title for the Queen of Heaven, was born at this very time, about the time of the winter solstice. The very name by which Christmas is popularly known among ourselves, Yule Day, proves at once its pagan and Babylonian origin. Remember we said another name for Yule is Wheel, which uh, was a uh, symbolic meaning of the sun god. Well, Yule also has uh, many different uh, meanings to it. If you go to Google and go and look at Yule Day, and you'll find it almost every link would lead you that it was pagan worship that was a representation of the Yule log. If you go to... If you go to um, the uh, the dictionary, Webster's Dictionary of 1828. If you go to Webster's Dictionary and type in Yule Log, it would say it is a practice to honor the birth of Christ. But then at the bottom, when it, when it says its origin of the Yule Log, it would say Anglo-Saxon or pagan ritual, pagan practice. That is the original meaning of it. It says Yule is a Chaldean name for an infant or little child and as the 25th of December was or and the, as the 25th of December was called by our pagan Anglo-Saxon ancestors Yule Day or the Child's Day and the night that preceded it called Mother Night long before they came in contact with Christianity that sufficiently proves its real character far and wide in the realms of paganism was this birthday observed so Yule day, Yule also is a Chaldean name for infant or child. What child was born on December 25th? Nimrod. And that is why we have the, 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 the Yule log burning, because it has nothing to do with Christ. It has all to do with Nimrod, the date that Christmas is celebrated on, the activities that we do, that we, do, uh, that we uh, participate Christmas on, the activities such as that we name Christmas wreaths, mistletoe, uh, 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 Yule log, Santa Claus, Christmas trees, uh, decorating houses and lights, caroling out in the snow. All that may seem good, but it is 
it is all to represent Nimrod. Nimrod was the starter, the founder of all this and used to do it on the same holiday, Saturnalia, which is the celebrated the same date as we do Christmas today. So Christmas is just filled with things that doesn't even mean anything or have anything to do about Christ. It has to do with, with, with the Antichrist or, or the one who went against God and established every false religion on this earth, which was Nimrod. It has everything to do with Nimrod. We see it. It doesn't have nothing to do with God. We even have the history books confirm, confirm this. So, why would we be celebrating Christmas if it's all for that? Now, now don't get me wrong. If you want to decorate your houses with light, you can do so. But why would you decorate your house with lights, knowing it's a pagan practice and you're doing it on a pagan day? To me, that makes no sense. I would, if it were me, decorate my house all year round. Why not decorate it all year round? Why do I have to do it? when it is a pagan holiday, when I know that it is of pagan origin. To me, that, that, that would make no sense. Why do I have to, you know, everybody is nice to everybody in, uh, in Christmas season. Why do I have to be nice to everybody just in Christmas season? Why can't I do it all year round? Why do I have to give gifts to, to you or, or, or to my friends in Christmas season, knowing that that was also a, 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 a pagan uh, origin? Why do I have to do it in Christmas season? Why can't I do it all year round? Why can't we do this all year round? Why does it have to be on Christmas season? Because Christmas season, we don't know it. A lot of people do not know it, but it is pagan ritual. It is pagan origin, the things that we do on Christmas. And it was Christianized by Constantine and his church. It was Christianized. He wanted to get paganism and Christianity to worship together. So he grabbed some pagan rituals baptized it into Christianity, named it Christian names, and changed the characteristics a little bit so now Christians can join and the pagans can still join because they're still worshiping their gods. So, so, so it's, it's, a very, it's a very deep, deep thing. Let's go back to Colossians chapter 2. Colossians chapter 2. And, uh, and as we prepare to close, Colossians chapter 2, we'll read verse 6 and 8 again. Uh, it says, As ye have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk ye in him, rooted and built up in him, and established in the faith, as ye have been taught, abounding therein with thanksgiving. Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit, after the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. We have seen in these studies of Christmas that it is nothing but the tradition of men and the rudiments of the world and not after Christ. These traditions that we do on Christmas, the Christmas holiday season as a whole, when you study the Bible and you study history books and you see the origin, it has nothing to do with Christ. It is tradition and it has nothing to do with the Bible or Christianity. We see that these practices were practiced long before Christ even came on this planet. So that is what that concludes our study of Christmas. I hope you uh, I hope you liked it and learned from it as much as I did. Um, thank you for watching this video. If you like this video, please press like. Uh, also, you can comment below. Tell us what you think. Um, also, we are on Facebook at Expounding the Bible. Until then, this is your host Nathaniel Merle saying not only have a blessed day, but I hope you've had a very good year and I hope you have a wonderful new year. And to begin the new year 2017, we will come and bring the subject on why or how can we study the Bible effectively. You won't want to miss it. We will have our guest speaker, hopefully, God willing, Raphael Altamar back with us to help us explain of this subject. So until then, this this is your host Nathaniel Morrell saying, have a blessed day.